What's up guys, in this video, I wanna talk about excluded values. Now, not just excluded values from any rational expression, but excluded values from when we're trying to simplify a rational expression divided by another rational expression. Now, when we're understanding like excluded values, the one thing like I always tell my students is like, you can't divide by zero, right? Just memorize that, you cannot divide by zero. Just like get it ingrained in your brain. And a lot of students do pretty well with that. They're like, all right, I know like I can't divide by zero, so whatever number I can plug in to make my denominator equal to zero um, is not gonna work. And some students like, you know, kind of want to know like why, why can't you do that? And you know, want to look at maybe a graphical approach. So I'll add on to that just a little bit. I don't want to go too deep into that for example, but I do want to kind of show like if I had the example or the function y is equal to one over x, we know that x cannot equal zero. And the reason being is because we can't divide by zero. Now, the reason why we can't divide by zero, just real quick, is if you could divide by zero, then you could multiply by zero to get that value. And what do I mean by that? Well, let me kind of show you. Let's pretend you could divide by zero. One divided by zero was not some undefined value that's something you couldn't do, right? It actually equaled the value B. Now remember, here's something that's really important. Not only about understanding this, but also about understanding division. Anytime we have a division, we can always write a division problem as a multiplication problem, right? That's the idea of like the factoring. And also we talk about division and fractions or division and multiplication. So if I was to rewrite this um, division statement as a multiplication statement, I would say zero times B is equal to one. And hopefully you recognize anything times zero is just gonna be zero, right? So zero is equal to one, it does not work, right? That, that, that statement does not make any sense. Therefore, that is why we cannot divide by zero. Also, if you kind of look at like what this graph looks like, if you were to plug in numbers and we could use Desmos or any kind of like graphing utility, what you recognize here is this graph is gonna get closer and closer and closer to zero from the right-hand side, as well as closer and closer to zero from the left-hand side. But what it's doing is it's approaching infinity, right? It keeps on going up and up and down and down, and it's never actually going to touch or equal to zero. That is why that zero is going to be undefined. That is why you cannot divide by zero. So the reason why that is so important is when I write an equation like this and I'm trying to identify the excluded values, I need to understand like, all right, what is excluded at this point? What makes my denominators at this point undefined? Now, in this example, you can see that, I don't know, this does not look pretty cool, right? I'm gonna have to factor that. So the first thing we're gonna wanna do is factor and then we'll go ahead and do some excluded values before we start simplifying. So first thing I'm gonna do is say, all right, I can factor out an X in this case, that's gonna be G, my GCS. Over here, that's gonna be a quadratic trinomial. So what two numbers multiply me three, add to give me four. That's gonna be an X plus three, X plus um, one. So X plus. And so now you can see like, all right, these are my new denominators, right? These are now just the factored for my denominators. So let's just go ahead and write out what these excluded values are gonna be. So X cannot equal here. Well, we say zero, negative one. Um, we have negative three. And it looks like we already have one, so therefore it's good. Okay, so if we know that we're going to, we factored our these expressions, if we're gonna have to divide these, we know we're gonna wanna simplify, right? So let's go and factor um, the numerators now, just so we can see what operations we're gonna need to do to simplify this rational expression. So x squared minus four, that can be simplified to an x minus two, x plus two. Now this expression is a quadratic trinomial. What two numbers multiply to give you negative eight, add to give you negative two, that'd be negative four and positive two. So now I have completely simplified everything, but there's no expressions right here, right? And there's nothing I need to worry about as my excluded values, at least not yet, right? Because remember, what happens when you have a fraction divided by another fraction? That is the same thing as taking your preserve, preserve fraction and multiplying it by the reciprocal of your divisor, right? This fraction is my divisor. This is what I'm dividing this fraction by, right? So if I want to rewrite the division as a multiplication problem, right, with fractions, all I need to do is flip the divisor and rewrite it as multiplication. Now you can see that all of my terms here are separated by multiplication. Now I can have a cancel party, right? So now I'm just gonna divide off terms that are the same in the numerator and same in the denominator. But before I go into that, I want you to recognize something. I just put some new expressions in the denominator. So guess what I need to do? I need to find those excluded values. The zero and the negative one is still the same. But over here, what else did I add? I now have a four and a two. So guess what guys, how this expression is written, just like if this was the original problem, I cannot have zero in my denominator. So therefore four and two are gonna make my denominator zero. So therefore they are also going to be excluded values. Now, once I've identified my excluded values, now I can worry about simplifying. One of the big mistakes that students will make is they'll go through the whole process, simplifying everything, and then they'll only find the excluded values from the simplified answer. Don't do that. Find your excluded values from the original example, just in a simplified you know, form, like it fact, factored out, then go ahead and simplify. All right, so let's go and see what we have here. I have an x minus two, x minus two. Um, I have an x plus one and an x plus one. And it looks like that's it, right? So now I can just leave this as an x plus four, x minus four. 
And then here, I can go ahead and multiply that out. So it'd be what, x squared? Uh, actually, you know, yeah, um, 3x, 2x, and x plus 6. So let's go and get this. It's going to be an x squared. Let's see what's going to be 5x, 6, where my x cannot equal a 0, negative 1, negative 3, 4, and 2. Hopefully that helped clarify you are our excluded values. If you want more, if you want another example of rational expressions, then check out the next video I have for you here.